We did. I take care of your skin. Practice today, <laughs> practice yesterday. How'd everything go over the last two days? Uh, good, good. You know, we got a lot of contact in um, yesterday. Really aggressive uh, physical practice, and today was a little bit lighter. Um, we did a good job, both practices. What did you see from the offense today that after the physicality yesterday that maybe is improvement or, or maybe a step back? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a different practice. You know, you go full board and, uh, you know, you got to really buckle down. And then this is a little bit little bit more of assignment. It's still, it's still a little bit physical. Um, I thought it was pretty good coming out. You know, they're a little sore, um, understandably, but uh, I thought they did a good job. Number of receivers sitting out, are you having a level of frustration there? Well, it's yeah, it's frustrating. Um, you know, you just got to try and get the guys healthy. The problem is, is when you have when you when a couple of them miss practices, that doubles and sometimes triples the load on the other guys, right? Yeah. So, you know, then you, then they start slowing down and they don't play as fast. And so, it's always a concern of how you're going to balance that in terms of you know, how much workload you want to give them. They got to know the assignments, but you don't want to run into the ground. And the rest of the team has to practice too, right? So. Um, People are counting on those guys to give them look, so it's it's a challenge. Why do you uh, why you've been high on the crew? You know, he is a he's a football player. The, the guy has incredible ball skills. He's got a really good feel for space. Incredible in traffic and fierce competitor, and more difficult to tackle than, than you would think. But in general, just a, just a great football player. So those guys who are getting time now, can they just make their marks if they have the opportunity? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's always, you know, as a coach, you always stay open to that because guys will surprise you. You know, you have your internal judgment going on. This guy can play, this guy can't. But you just, every day is a new day, and somebody gets an opportunity, and next thing you know, they're they're in the mix. How do, you, how do your tight ends look right, right now? We haven't seen a ton of work out of your tight ends, at least from our viewing portions. But uh, how do the tight ends look? Good. We're limited in numbers, again, with that position. Um, so they're getting a lot of reps. Um, and there's a lot to learn in this offense for the tight ends, you know, um, but they're doing a good job. Is that internal judgment that you speak of, is it more even because you are new to them and they're new to you? Yeah, no, I just kind of train myself to, to keep that stuff inside my head, you know. You know, obviously as human beings we judge constantly everything, but I just make sure I keep it in my head and I coach them every day like they're going to be a starter. And I can tell you so many stories of... Uh, when I was at Folsom, I didn't think kids could play, and I never told them that, but in my head, and then a year later, they're leading the section in touchdowns. It's like, well, I was wrong on that one. So I'm wrong all the time, and that's why I keep it inside my head. Are I'm you not... wrong the other way? Sometimes. <laughs> What, are you seeing any separation in, in any of the quarterbacks, receivers, any of those position groups? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the, at the wide receiver position, yeah. I mean, there's guys that are emerging that make plays like Samson, you know. Um, and then quarterback-wise, you know, I'm, I'm really not dodging it. I know you guys want more than, I, than, than I'm giving you. Um, but they're, it goes back and forth, and they're all really close, you know. In some ways, I wish there was more separation to, to make it easier. Um, but in other ways, you know, I feel like there's three guys that – I think we could win with any of them. I really do. Do you personally have a drop dead date or anything like that when no, you your... No, I don't. I mean, yeah, August 20th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a team uh, that's, you know, made its name on defense, did, yeah. does it present any problems making a transition to a team that's gonna gonna move the ball? You know, I don't see any problems with it. I see opportunities just because, you know, when you watch a team that has a great defense, you get a lot of opportunities. You get a lot of three and outs, and you're able to take shots and be aggressive. Where, where if you're if you're with a team that has trouble getting off the field defensively, it really creates a lot of pressure because it's almost like diffusing a bomb. You got to feel like you got to score every time, and that's that can create a lot of tension and pressure as a play caller. Um, but when you got a great defense. No, that's it's all good. And you want them to think the same thing. Absolutely. We want to be just as aggressive as they are on defense on offense. To me, um, that's why that's the uh, the image or the paradigm or whatever that I picture is our aggressiveness, their aggressiveness. And when you get that rolling, it's unstoppable. Are you and Kyle Whittingham on the same page in that regard? <laughs> I can't, speak, I can't speak for, for Coach, but uh, all I can say is uh, he's been great. He hasn't uh, held me back in any way. He's given me everything I've needed in terms of to be successful, practice structure and all that. He's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, listen, we got to move We got to move the ball and score points. And if we do that, then head coaches are usually really happy. <laughs> we won't see you until after the scrimmage on Saturday. So what do you need to have happen on Saturday? You know, whatever Coach wants to do on Saturday, I'm not sure, you know, 
what that plan is. That's that's uh, his call. I mean, he'll get our input. Um, but I. It really doesn't change, you know. I want to see us be physical. I want to see us be able to protect. I want our, our uh, pass protection to continue to improve, um, and our overall development. And you know, honestly, I want us to get healthy too. It's a big part. Of Do you have a, an idea on the division of reps? <laughs> I don't, because I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to be structured yet. I think coaches can probably get a feel for you know tomorrow, and then he'll take everybody's input and then figure out how much how much we want to do. Have you ruled out playing two quarterbacks coming kind of season? I, I haven't ruled out anything. Yeah, I mean, I've never really done that, but I'm not. I'm not completely opposed to it. You know what I mean? It's not like I have this, you know, um, perception that you can't do it that way. You know, you got two guys that can play. You got to always have two ready anyway, and one struggling, and the other plays. And injuries happen, so. But no, I haven't. I haven't counted that out. What about three guys? Any scenario in which you'd play three guys? <laughs> right here, four. It's just like a juggle. <laughs> four, yeah. yeah. Jason. Who wants to go to in next? Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Uh, that would be unusual, but uh, you know, sometimes it happens. I guess through injuries. How much do you do, uh, put weight on day-to-day -day practice versus these few scrimmages that you have in the camp? Well, we were live with the quarterbacks yesterday. Um, yeah, I think that, no question about it. You know, you gotta how they respond under pressure. Seven on seven is like it's not even football. I mean, it's almost like a different sport. Yeah. Um, team football where they can't hit the quarterback. It's closer, but it's still not real football mm -hmm. until uh, you get hit and you you have to scrape yourself off the turf and get back in and make a great decision and be accurate. That's where the game's at, and you cannot simulate that unless it's live. You just can't.